All right, uh, voice acting, right? Voice acting. <clears throat> oh, losing 50-50. I see. Well, for me, I'm, I actually aimed for it every single time and I still lost. Well, you can't lose if you never get the five star in the first place. <laughs> uh, the feedback on the board doesn't look right. Uh, shouldn't we be receiving not but I praise? It wasn't like this before. What voice did I give him? Oh, right. A little bit uh, normal. Uh, quite unexpected, yes. I suspect foul play. Fortunately, our boss has, in his wisdom, prepared a contingency plan. Well, of course he has. Why else do you think he's the boss? A bone? A bear? Is the Varian? He's got something for us, apparently. Ah, right on time. Here comes the contingency now. What contingency? Well, that is you. That's what the boss said. But uh, he is not here right now, so let us explain. Just a short explanation, once again. During the last two days, we released the results of our champion duelist plan to the public. We've also sold three orders that will allow people to pay half the price as a deposit and thus qualify for early access. Um, aren't you supposed to have, like, merchandise ready before you offer pre-sale? We also place an evaluation column. That is to say, the message board at the door of our store, which people could leave their profuse praises. This is what they call building hype. Just as the boss expected, our store really did get very popular. But very few people placed pre-orders. And the amount of praise left in the other column was also lamentably low. You lack sincerity this. Where's the internal quality control that? Get with the times. Such as the reviews we've gotten. Looks like the market wasn't quite what you expected, huh? I fear things are not so simple. We have a saying around here. That's where there's smoke, there's fire. That is to say, if that something never arises from nothing. In other words, someone is spreading rumors. Baseless, scurrilous rumors that smear us. That smear us irresponsibly. That irresponsibly invent disparaging fictions and defamatory fabrications. The boss is sure that his brother is the only one who can be behind this smear campaign. Le Pont Halegerie is the most to be worried about if this plan succeeds after all. So what do you want to do? Hire to smear them right back? Lady Forina above! How could you ever do such a thing? Our boss is Caron's as a brother after all. Even if they might stoop to such low and vulgar means, we will defeat them fair and square. Exactly. Only this way can the Elder reform his wayward little brother. Whatever needed for in that case. To get them to reveal what they mean by sincerity and internal quality control, of course. Reveal what now? Is that not fair? And is Fontaine not the nation of fairness? That's not what fairness means! The boss said that everyone seems to think that the other party's packaging has been done with sincerity. We should keep pace with them. We shall package our champion duelists as they package adventurers. Adding that to our wealth of data will guarantee us a comeback victory. Packaging? Nah, they just want adventurers to turn into a toy, that's all. Oh, that must be it. Please ask them what it is. That story must be the packaging we speak of. I too have heard of something. It seems that while Khan was drunk, he accidentally let slip that this toy was made due to a certain person. Ooh. Are we actually going to see Bennett or just hear about them again? Imagine what a grand tale they must have shared to inspire such words from him. Huh. Really? You know, Traveler, I'm not suddenly kind of curious as to what story it might be. Why don't we try going back and asking? 
Did you? Oh, splendid, splendid. Uh, we shall leave this in your capable hands, then, Miss Paimon, Mr. Traveler. Did you ask about his story? I'm counting on you. And then I gave, um... I gave the owner of their <laughs> store kind of laid-back voice. It's very simple and for fun. Do you want to try? Okay. You can come back anytime. I'll be, be here. No new dialogue there. Yeah. Something that also helps me with um, exploration is just I very much enjoy love even talking to NPCs twice if not thrice sometimes. Got you hydrated. Ah, hello again, dear customers. How have you been? Have you tried out the adventure toy, by the way? Hey there, Karen. Actually, we've got something I want to consult you about, and yeah, it's not a toy. Ah, a happy coincidence then. I enjoy these. Like a fortuitous opportunity to nap. Or just happening to have enough mora to buy what you'd like to. Ask away. I'd like to hear the story behind this toy. That's right. We heard that you based this toy on someone. That's gotta be the adventurer who started this tale, right? <laughs> I see. So, that is your question. Well, that adventure did indeed leave a deep impression on me. I met an adventurer in Springville when I was about to leave Mondstadt. It appeared that he had messed up some sort of meal delivery commission. Apparently, he had encountered several waves of monsters on the way there, and not only had he missed the timing, but the food had also been bumped about. Knowing a thing or two about cooking, I helped him make a new serving. Well, that sure was nice of you. Well, but that's not all. You might find it hard to imagine, but that one attempt at cooking resulted in all manner of accidents. The firewood got wet. A big hole got gouged out of the pot, and while I was plating it up, I was hit by some flying stones from out of nowhere. One of them even bounced into my head. Now that one really hurts. It's Bennett. It's definitely Bennett. Well, the job definitely did get done, albeit with a complaint from the customer that they had got a tooth on the stone while eating. Lady Friend above, surely it wasn't the stone that hit us on the head. Um, was the adventurer's name... Bennett? That was his name. Ah, wait. Do you two know him as well? Interesting fellow, that one. Later, he took me to all sorts of rarely visited places at Mondstadt to show his thanks. It was a pretty rough journey, but the uncommonly beautiful sights made it worth the effort. I would have taken him for a travel enthusiast. Had he not told me he discovered those places by losing his footing during adventures, or from getting lost. On the day of my return to Fontaine, he came to say goodbye, and there I asked him if he considers his unlucky disposition bothersome. He just gave me a thumbs up, and said, The world is full of all sorts of people, and maybe I just happen to be the unluckiest. But, thanks to that, I've also become the bravest person. And that's given me access to sights only I can see. What a brilliant way of putting things. Walking the path of misfortune with a big smile on one's face. Perhaps that's the spirit of a true adventurer. That's right. Bennett's the most adventurous adventurer for sure. I agree. Bennett's the best boy. If bad luck can be infectious, perhaps that adventuring spirit could be too. And with any luck... The latter can spread far further than the former. <laughs> I wonder, will this story give you enough material for your reports? Um, how did you figure out? How do you figure this one out this time? Where there's smoke, there's fire. That's what we say in Fontaine. If you really want to know about this story, you'd have asked the first time. But since you're only doing that now. I can only guess that my brother put you up to it. So you really did know. 
You know, Paimon doesn't get why Libre would have such a dim view of you. You're pretty smart, and you seem like a nice guy. It's anger, I think. He's probably still mad at me for what he sees as a betrayal. Betrayal? Our family is well known for our skills in making clockwork devices. I've always been good at making toys of that sort. And while my brother isn't quite as good, he's got a real knack for doing business. Since we both love toys, we agree that when we grew up, we would set up the best toy store ever. But it was only when we grew up that we realized that that we that we realized that someone had to succeed the family business. That is to say, the shop. My brother had a big fight with our father over that, and he went to strike out on his own. I, on the other hand, was convinced to stay. And is that not a betrayal? Hmm. Does it really count, though? Well, it wasn't a show of adventurousness. That was for sure. I was afraid that if I failed to make a name for myself out there, I'd have come crawling back to the family business. I just couldn't take the pressure. I've always been like that. I'd be the first to cry when we encountered some hooligans on the streets, but my brother would have get me behind. Well, but my brother would have get. But my brother would have me get behind him with a. Do not worry. Watch me send them flying with my knuckle sandwich. Your relationship seems kind of complicated. Well, I suppose that's how things played out, eh? In any case, I'll be here if you have any other questions. You are always welcome here in my store. Boss! Our two guests have a chance! Click as ever, I see. I suppose you gain much from your investigations. Huh. You know, Lever, why do you always show up later? Ah, uh, well, I suppose I am remiss. I shall strive to come earlier next time. Anyway, about that toy. You tell Lever about Bennett, he frowns. A toy based on an adventurer named Bennett, I see. And another thing, we didn't ask him, but my mom thinks your brother didn't badmouth your shop. He doesn't look like the type. Oh, how so? Oh, how so? He seems to be. He seems to be sorry about something concerning you. You pass Carmen's words on. The various gaze passed through you with what seems to be a place in the inter indeterminate distance, like a camera adjusting its focus. After a while, a dissatisfied noise struggled its way out of him. If you ask me, I don't think that idiot would do something like that either. Wait, so what was this whole contingency thing about? The boss was looking for an excuse, I suppose. <laughs> More likely than not, I say. Well, he's a businessman. Businessmen have reputations to consider. And he's the big brother. Oh, out there. And he's the big brother, is he not? A big brother got a name to uphold, you know? Say any more, or you'll eat my knuckle sandwich. <laughs> Le Vert exactly what Karen said he me like. Well, dear guests, I was just thinking that I should go pay that idiot a visit. Whoa! Are you gonna put your differences aside and go ask him for advice then? Of course not. But, if you think he's betrayed me and feels bad about that, Shouldn't I give him the opportunity to apologize to my face? Okay. He did say that, but I want to think that sort of betrayal someone needs to apologize for. Well, it's decided. Ah, bon. There's no need for any further pre-orders. Return all deposits what's needed and keep that evaluation board. What? Uh, boss, so we're not excluding the plan anymore? What about the data collection? Is there still time to make adjustments? No. The data collection continues. I have other plans for that. And you have got payments to collect, don't you? 
I always do honest business. Suspiciously honest in this case. Ah, the boss is the boss, even when he's being stubborn. Mm. I wouldn't call this attitude towards toys completely worthless. I'll pay a visit to see Le Port Olegri once the next two days of data collection are complete. I'd like you to, I'd like you two to come too, good customers. I've got some other things settled here in the shop, so if you will excuse me. Levert with an odd temper. He's not really gonna ask for an apology, is he? Is he? Well, would you look at that? A third party has bought an opportunity for change once again. Third party? That's two of you, of course. Thanks to you, the differences between the two shop owners may yet be resolved. That's what happened previously, too. Uh oh. Previously? Aye. Have you noticed how this shop is separate from Le Bois Augere by the Northland Bank? Boss originally wanted to set up shop next to Le Bois Augere to compete with them directly. Now, I doubt they knew about this boss history when they reserved that space, but in some way, they became a mediator in the conflict, didn't they? That's super interesting. The Fatui loved the Mel Abuse business, but this sort of money is the first for sure. Well, if Articino is the one who's in charge of it, it makes a bit more sense. From the way that Linny describes father, they seem to be... How would you call this? Um, what's the word? More reasonable, and possibly even more humane than some of the, the other harbingers we've encountered. And that is the importance of third parties. Just like our double axe still needs an audience. <laughs> well, what about solo acts? Would things work with just one actor and one audience? Wait, are you trying to betray me too? You'd better watch out for my knuckle sandwich then. <laughs> Welcome, dear guests. We meet again. It has not been long, and yet I miss you a little already. Uh, you sweet talker. Ah, woe is me. Loathe am I. How the pain stings. Perhaps I'd best get back to work. Let me state first that the planned data collection project will be divided into two parts. One will be run by Albert, and the other by me. On my side, we wish to model the agility of a champion duelist, and so we'll need you to complete a few underwater speed challenges. Huh? Do champion duelists have train underwater? Who knows? I do not know one personally, and I don't think the boss knows any either. He probably just thinks that it's cool as this way. He originally wanted to install 10 different water drawing mechanisms that can spray jets of water, but eventually gave up on the idea due to the high cost. That does sound pretty cool. Well, Fontaine is out of water after all, and if this is all other nations, I don't think Fontaine and Flares need it. Anyway. Oh, no. <clears throat> anyway. We prepare the handbook with relevant details. Please, peruse it at your disposal. Well, are you two raring to go already? Let me make some preparations. No problem. See, the collection devices have already been placed over there, so you need not worry about them. You just need to focus on completing the challenge. Hmm? Ah, okay. In the menu. Oh, that's a lot of primo gems. Okay, we might actually roll Linny. Might. Have you seen the evaluation board? Seems like someone likes those clockwork penguins. Ah, I saw it. Is the one talks about wanting to get to know Femini, right? Sounds like someone who would strike up some further collaboration, if you ask me. Premier? Oh, we're talking about those clockwork penguins on the table. 
a driver name from a name is there, man. He's and plays them in our store's consignment. He's a good lad with a pretty face. Soft-spoken fellow, but he's very good at making the toys. He seems like a melancholy, though. Like someone who lacks something that should have belonged to him. Mm, I know that look. You know, it's the same one that Arbon makes when he looks at his empty wallets. Don't suppose Femina is in need of Mora, do you? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. He didn't even discuss the profit split when he came to talk about the consignment. He wasn't in it for the Mora. True, but what else would trouble a lad of his age? Yeah. Yeah. And he is a winsome fellow too. I haven't seen the boss ever approve of a consignment. He not only offered to set up an outdoor store for the penguins, but even proposed a 50-50 split on the earnings. Unfortunately, one could only call the sales bidding. Many people came to look, sure, but there weren't many buyers. The toy is very intricately designed, but I'd say it also makes it harder to play with and harder to fix. Really? I didn't expect anyone... Bleh. Really? I didn't expect that anyone would leave a message about on the boards. Maybe it's a big client behind the day? Either way, we should tell the boss about it. Won't do to miss out on a good deal, you know? You can ring my bell, ring my bell.